Switch. Oh, I got the bad chair, huh? Yeah, Switch. Oh, okay. While you switch, uh, you guys, uh, um, seen the, uh, the TikTok trend with the, uh, um, fruit roll-up, but not the one you dip in ice cream? The one you eat off your, uh, partner's foot? No, your partner's wiener. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> fruit roll-up blowjob? Okay. Yep. Have you experienced it? No, but, uh, Kendra did send that to me. Figured out your wedding gift. <laughs> <laughs> so that reminds me of something I, I heard once. <clears throat> you know, flavored condoms, right? It's pretty much what it seems like. Well, yeah, edible though, right? Yeah, thinking about it. You're not supposed to bite them. <laughs> Hopefully you don't bite their fruit roll. Start <laughs> chewing on it. <laughs> Are we putting that in the episode? Yeah, 100%. All right, right there. There. then let's get to our story. Uh, Thaddeus. Yeah. Would you like to hear a story, buddy? Yeah. This one's a little bit after your time, but you've been to the home. Spiral staircase, big glass elevator. Ooh, 30, what? An elevator? Yeah, 35,000 square foot house. Ring any bells? The most expensive house sold on the MLS in Arizona. That's the one. So that, uh, those windows at that staircase, you remember them very well? No, more vaguely. All right. So they're all operable for all three floors in that particular uh, area of the house. And the spiral staircase, the way it's set up, you can't exactly access um, any of them through normal means. So, but they're all operable windows that need hardware that hadn't gotten hardware for something to the tune of three years. So somebody realized they didn't have hardware on them, and it was my job at that point to put hardware on these uh, windows, on this staircase that you couldn't reach because from the most reasonable point on the staircase, it was still eight to nine feet up. <laughs> <laughs> so on a spiral staircase, I got to um, test the new guy. And I trusted him pretty okay. because he, he struck me as a nice young man, but um, this was the ultimate test because on the, hypothetically speaking, the third floor of these stairs... Uh, right about to the top, or about 10 shy of the very top, 20-ish feet down, I had to have him hold a stepladder upright, and he was acting as my other two feet of the ladder, <laughs> while the true other two feet of the ladder were hanging off the back side of the steps. So he was anchoring the ladder to a position which I could get on it to access the said windows and put the hardware on them, that no one is ever going to touch again. My fingerprints will be the last ones on them ever in history because they're that <laughs> insane, like as far as where they are placement-wise. So uh, I got the pleasure of putting the hardware on those windows while looking down, looking over at the new guy who's never seen anything like this done before, <laughs> let alone done it. Yeah. And uh, I will say this, it went well, the hardware went on, and the builder was happy. I think uh, that's compliant with OSHA standard 245.3- or 311. Yeah. Um, how long did you debate about just not putting it up there and see if they noticed? Um, I didn't question it at all, actually. The first thing that comes to my mind when I get put in these situations is how am I going to get it done? Like excited, you were probably excited to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's one of those like uh, adrenaline junkie moments where it's like, hey, this could be really fun. It can go well, and it'll be a good story to tell. Or um, I don't have to work for a few days. <laughs> I win either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, we try to refrain from doing those kinds of things uh, unless the situation really calls for it. But. Uh, yeah. The was boss wasn't boss wasn't around, right? Oh, I was the boss. Okay. As far as anyone was concerned in that instance, yeah. Well, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Don't blame you. <laughs> I I would probably go back and uh, maybe not do it now, but good time. Joe. Hmm. How much would it cost you to give a, a fruit roll a blowjob? Oh dear God. Can, can I chew? Can we not be the just sexual question podcast? Well, I'm just thinking, like, you know, if you're good enough, you can get the job done before it's all the way gone. 
That's true. true. So oh, really, all you did is eat a fruit roll-up. This is true. Or yeah. part of one. Yeah, it's not. I'm not touching the penis. It's not gay, that is. Yeah, fruit roll-ups only like 50 calories, so you're fine. It's 50 calories. I need more calories than that. Can we do two? Well, if you finish them off properly, you probably get extra. Well, I mean, yeah, but I want more calories out of fruit roll. Can we put a couple on there? Does that work? Yeah, you can do two max. Nice. Can I choose the flavor? No. Well, I'm not gay, but 20 bucks is 20 bucks. <laughs> You fix my transmission, I might think about it. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> that's a good deal. <laughs> I'm giving you 20 bucks now? <laughs> Anyways, back to the podcast. What's that? Well, we had last week off. Because the week before that, we did the podcast. And then I think that was the week we were working in the middle of the week and wanted to shoot ourselves. Uh, so. And then we went and shot things in the desert instead. Yes, we did. And then I tried calling Mason, and he was not picking up his phone. When? Terrible. Uh, that would be when we had the bachelor party. Oh, fuck, dude. I didn't even... Yeah, you could have gone out, shot all kinds of stuff. No, I mean, I'll probably, I wouldn't have been able to go either. This is just in the height of the disaster of the week. And oh, my, yeah, and my wife was out of town on top of it. Do you want to tell everyone what happened? No. And also, my kids are on another level, as far as. Just to fill in any blanks for people real quickly, Mason lost a lot of money. Yeah. And Still, not, yeah. not like lost. And no, he didn't steal any Yeah. Money. And not charity to a casino either. Yes. Or yeah. to a charity. Sport. Yeah. Yeah. Charity. The organization or. Or, or charity herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, my kids are. Oh, man. It's a good thing that. Or child safety laws. <laughs> I thought about it a couple of times. They yearn for the mines, dude. Put them to work, bro. <laughs> Just don't work. You, I don't recommend having kids. Just kidding. You should have kids. Because your kids are, what, 10 and... No, 8 and 5. Oh. Well, about to be 6 in 3 weeks. About to be 6 and 9, I think. Do you ever worry about them getting bigger than you and beating you up? Uh, my oldest one's for sure probably going to be taller than me. You just got to get that old man strength so you can just beat the crap out of them yeah. up until they're an adult. Well, I mean, yeah, our relationship isn't physical. I just have those thoughts creep through my head when they get to a certain level. Yeah. <laughs> and don't act on it. Yeah, can't got to keep them soft, you know? Yeah, the pleasure of just thinking about it is enough than actual going through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And they call it fantasizing. Yes. Well, uh, did the bachelor party talk? Was there a midget stripper? No midget stripper. Damn. We tried calling you. This <laughs> I'm a midget stripper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, who won in poker? Um, I think there were two rounds and. Two of my cousins. I forget. Took, took uh, your guys' money? No, we're just playing for fun. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll take the chips. Yeah. We're competitive, like, either way. If there's if there's bragging rights on the line, then yeah. Which, if you do want a fun story, the night ended with we were playing uh, beer pong, essentially. and uh, Was there beer involved? There was beer involved. Some of the worst beer, apparently. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. What's that called? Milwaukee's Fest? <laughs> no, no, Dos Equis, uh Cucumber. Cucumber? What? You ate the cucumber seltzer. Like, I, I'm not sure there is. Did you taste it? No. Oh. But. Sounds awful. Well, I mean, the people throwing up after drinking it was enough. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good night. No one got too crazy, but. Um, yeah. There was a bet that was made where my cousin was like, you can't, uh, he's like, he lost a hand at poker and everyone had said, whoever loses the hand has to shotgun the Dos Equis cucumber beer because it's the one that everyone hates, like unanimously. Yeah. So he lost, but he's got um, like a thing where he can't drink beer. A so gluten allergy? <laughs> something like that. So, uh, but he could drink a seltzer or whatever. So... Um, he tried to shotgun a seltzer. 
That's a lot of bubbles. Well, okay, wait. So he pulls it out of the fridge, and he's like, whoa, that's too cold. Can I throw this in the microwave? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Classic. So my brother, goes, <laughs> my brother goes, no. Like, what do you mean it's too cold? You lost. Shotgun the uh, seltzer. And he's like, he's like, no. Uh, he's like, no one can do that. And my brother's like, yeah, they can. My cousin goes, a hundred bucks if you can do it. My brother goes, okay. Goes to the fridge, grabs one, shotguns it right in front of him, just downs the whole thing, no no stopping for air or uh, whatever, because that was the bet. Like you, uh, no one could do it without stopping to like take a breath. One hit. Yeah, just downs the whole thing. And he goes, there you go, want my hundred bucks. <laughs> like one minute later, is then like walking his driveway and just... Throws it all up, but oh. it beelined to my truck for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so Joe was on good behavior for the most part. Oh man, that's starting up. Yeah, I've been off the sauce. Oh yeah, you've been off for a while. Do you stay off of it? Yeah. No. Cool. Long term? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Even trying not to drink soda. Sugar free in this instance of monster to stay awake for such an occasion. Mm-hmm. Very long day. Does that include shots? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I shouldn't bring tequila anymore. I mean, you can bring tequila. I just won't be able to. What is you drink it by yourself. You're just an alcoholic. <laughs> That's what I was all these years. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the night ended with um, me and my partner lost the last. Uh, it was my cousin Justin and I. We lost the last game of beer pong, and it was. If you lost, you had to run around the block, like, in your boxers. So, the nice part was there's uh, people sitting on their front porches, too, at, like, midnight or whatever. So. That's fine, because it's just funny, and they can't call the cops because they can't do anything. Yep, exactly. Cops aren't driving all the way out there anyways. No. You live in BFE? He, he lives he? right up the road from you. Oh, jeez. Why don't you guys just stop by, then? I tried calling you. Yeah, but the loser should have had to run to my house. Okay, that's, like... He's at Joe Max, you're at Happy Valley. Mile and a half. <laughs> I had the mini bike with me. Could have rode it. Yeah, that's, that's true. I would have woken you right up. What time of the night was it? Midnight. Oh, for sure. I was asleep. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. It was a good time, though. Fucked up door? So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so... Oh, yeah, the Colby. Yeah. It's an active project, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> they won't hear this. Uh, so we have a project that's going right now, and these people, have, it's it's a nice house. It's in Scottsdale. Um, they've got these very nice windows and doors. They're aluminum clad so what that means is that their wood windows there's a aluminum metal on the outside creates a very nice finish um it's waterproof uh very weather resistant all that good stuff very expensive product though whoever installed one of these doors i posted it on my story last week um they didn't attach it to the studs like they were supposed to they just cut out, like, they removed the door panels from the old door system, cut out whatever other piece that they need to, and attached it into the old door frame, stuck out over the outside, and got trim that was just barely big enough to stick on there to cover the distance. And they had to caulk the shit out of it to be able to hide some of the gaps that they couldn't cover all the way. So when you look at this door, now that I've got the trim taken off, you see a door inside a door frame inside of a stud. So how was it? The caulking was holding it together? The trim on. The trim was. That's what I yeah. mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is not safe. Yeah. And these, like I said, these are, these, the whole door package is tens of thousands of dollars for this house. And their install must have been like, pick them up from Home Depot type work. So it's like, what do you have against people looking for work at Home Depot? Uh, as long as it's good, I don't care. 
but a lot of times the, you get what you pay for essentially simple yeah Ads. so that's fair yeah. Yeah. Because there are qualified specialists who come out and do door installations on such a product on a regular basis. And they decided not to go that route, apparently. They Which, just... even for that, like, it's... <laughs> the stupid part about that is that you can look it up on YouTube and figure it out. Yeah. No, this stuff isn't hard. It's pretty straightforward. But that kind of reminds me of a home I went to in recent years where it was something where they spent a lot of money had a place to buy windows and doors in a nice house in a nice neighborhood and on installation they got probably the worst installer i think i've ever seen um and when they couldn't get one of the doors to work on an oxxo system a biparting uh, multi-slide mm -hmm. they they pulled the interlock back on a vinyl door and they just ran screws from the panel into the track and then from the panel into the head to just lock that one shut and when the builder couldn't figure out why he couldn't get the door open, I went and checked it out. And I was just like, oh. Wait, wait, wait. So they put screws behind the active panel so it couldn't no, open? No, through the active panel. They, they drilled holes through the active panel into the head and then into the track so he couldn't open it physically. And I asked the builder, I'm like, where'd you guys source this? And he gave me an answer that I, that I knew exactly what it was going to be. Because I asked him flat out. I'm like, did Here, you? Did I'm, you... I'm going to mute it real quick. So it's an app you download or they recommend to you once you buy their product for um, a degree of uh, services and work, if you will. And somebody said on said app that they could handle such a, such an undertaking and they have probably never touched doors like this in their life. We're talking you know, probably nine foot tall vinyl multi-slide. And it's... The guy who bought them is in a very good position to have spent more money on better things, but he got sold on the package somehow, probably for a killer deal, and pretty much all of it needs to get ripped out. Which, the problem is with some of the windows and doors, like, we, we've we been in that luxury market where people are spending hundreds of, like, over $100,000 on a window and door package. Yeah. And then there's other people where it's like, hey a slider door should be a thousand dollars and that's going to be like your very base like go to home depot it's a thousand dollars exactly yeah and so once you tell them hey one sliding door can be five thousand dollars and that is stuff from the wild wild west which we love we absolutely love so All we're not bashing that in any way but like they start going what but we're talking a house where the dirt was like 1.5 to 2 right yeah. but there and there's some people with They've already got that in their mind that, like, this is what a door should cost. Like, right. And then also people sometimes, I don't know, to me it's just from an observation standpoint that sometimes pe the way people make their money is because they're so into trying to make sure they're getting a good deal and all that stuff that they don't, we look at it and we go, hey, where you live, the price you paid, you should not go buy a Lowe's door. You need to go buy a door from... Don't buy the Mitsubishi Mirage. Yeah. Go buy the Volkswagen Passat, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's simple as, you know. Yep. Oh, gosh. But, yeah, uh, we can get into that one another time. Uh, I'll have to see if I can muster up some memory on that one. It was a good one, though. That whole thing was just awesome. Yeah. So good. Nightmare House. I really feel bad for the homeowner. I really sincerely do. Was that the only slider or did they have more of the units no, in there no they did yeah and they were all equally bad it was like i said the worst installation across home i've ever seen in my entire life the electrical components that were made out of plastic were being used to shims in places um we're talking jams that were four different shapes like i think the only time this guy ever picked up a level was after it got run over by a truck it was it was bad man I feel like even for multi-slides, you should be able to kind of look at something and go, even if, if you've done doors before, you could probably figure it out. Yeah, but like somebody who stopped caring and then the icing on the cake is they got painted. Vinyl. The vinyl doors got painted. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. you guess what color? Black. Oh, yeah. On the money. Flat. <laughs> Just 
You order them black. Dude. Oh my gosh. Don't do anything vinyl black ever for any reason in Arizona. This might be a specifically Arizona thing, Arizona Vegas, um, maybe even certain parts of California. They will turn back into a very, um, they, they become malleable and then they harden because what happens is over the course of the day when sun's on them, off them, on them, off them, on them, off them, you get some very peculiar things happening that you're not going to see in other states like Colorado, for example, or like New Mexico where the climate isn't as like devastatingly hot in the summers. So uh, black vinyl out here does not last just like some cars out here will have problems that you'll never see in another state. Uh, Arizona is a very violent place. Everything out here wants you to die, including the people. So don't ever move here, please. <laughs> um, Which we were just looking at a statistic on that, that Maricopa County this last year, I think, were, uh, yes, this last year had the highest uh, influx of people. Was, was it 50-some um, thousand? We're also rated one Bless of the you. most rude states in the country, I believe. Really? Who? Yeah. A lot of people come here from nice places where oh. people aren't being baked to death by the sun and don't have cars with working AC. Fuck those people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if we're part Contri- I don't know. Contribute to the issue. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what we're doing here saying that, but uh, just go away, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep. Don't honk at me. The light's been green for one second. I don't have AC. It doesn't work when it's this hot. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. I got a phone call uh, a couple weeks ago from a past client. Hmm. And it was a difficult client to deal with during the transaction. Um, I think I had told you guys about this guy before, but... It was a difficult. Uh, it was a difficult client. We'll just put it there. We closed on uh, the gentleman's house. Uh, I ended up. There was a couple issues with the seller because the the seller had flipped the house. Uh, so I came out of pocket for helping with the, some of the landscape stuff because the seller had screwed that up, and we we're so close to closing that I wanted to take care of it. Um, There's also an issue with the fans or whatever so i brought out an electrician to take care of it i gifted the guy a fan for free i gifted the dude a uh, home warranty thing so like things are stacking up at this point right um i get a phone call from him a couple weeks ago he's like hey man how's it going like blue balled me (laughs) uh i go doing good what's up and he's like, well, we're coming up on about the one-year anniversary of the sale of the house. And um, I was going to see if you could give me, uh, pay for the extension on my home warranty. I'm like, um. That's balls. Well, well, he, he then launched into a whole litany of things on why he thought that I should do that. He felt that uh, things were not handled well, that he found out later that I was a young agent and that uh, I was new to the game and that he thought things were missed and things of that nature. So, Did you ask him? I would be like, well, what do you think was missed? Um, he Not really, because he's, he's one of the guys where you get him on the phone and he's going to talk to you for oh, at least 15 minutes. Yeah, I get it. So it's just like you kind of just let him go. Um, so, but part of it was asking, well, I guess he even told me, he's like asking for concessions, more repairs, things like that. Uh, and he's like, I've talked to people even inside your company. And I'm like, by, if you're talking company and you mean the brokerage, there's thousands of us. And we are like, this is my issue with brokerages is that we're not related in any way. We submit documents to the same parent company and that's it. But I was able to walk through. I then kind of turned around and just politely told the guy, I was like, hey, here's what happened as far as I paid for the home warranty, the landscaping, brought out the electrician. Um, I did the due diligence going through it. Yeah, I was early into it, but I was running everything by people in the office, people who had experience. So I wasn't just running and gutting like a wild man out there. But dude was still pressing for, well, I think you should pay for this. And I'm like, well, 
I disagree with you. He also brought up, he's like, I know that you probably made a good amount of money on that. So I think that it's like, dude, um, w did you pay me? No, you didn't. The seller paid me. So we're done. And that was it. Like, I remember last year he brought, I'm not going to bring that up. That's, I don't need to get into that. Like, what did you, like, some, like, you, we advise you on what to do. Like, we can't predict the future and be like, oh, well, this might happen, this might happen. The, the amount so of let's, disclosures that they sign for yeah, that as well. So let's, yeah, so let's, let's ask the seller to pay for concessions for just in case scenarios that might happen to well, a house. Well, okay, think about this though. This is last year when things were still kind of crazy, right? Where you couldn't get concessions. Right. Yeah. So no one was getting concessions. No one was getting a lot of repairs on the houses. We did get some repairs or credits for repairs towards the house. So I advised him not to just go full bore and ask for everything that came up on the Benzer. But I said, hey, I think we should go after these key ones right here, which which, th which they did. Which you probably you explained you have a lot. You have background in it and it, you're familiar with the structure of homes. So like, I feel like you should be comfortable with. Yeah. Well, that too. And then also it's like. I had closed a decent amount of homes by that time, so I knew what was going on in the market. I knew how things, like, what was going on, so it wasn't like it was my first transaction. And then it's like, for for him to say, like, I've got people who say, like, you should have gone for concessions. It's like, yeah, over 50% of houses right now are getting concessions for the sales. whoop de doo That was not last year. Because last year, most things were on the market for about three days, and they're gone. It's not the same market. It's different. So if you were to come to me today and say, hey, what should we do? We might be able to get concessions or I think I can get you a lower price than what they're asking for. Two different markets. If we, if we were to go do that 18 months ago, everyone would laugh at you. Or they wouldn't even present your offer. They would not even present your offer. And that was it. I know, so, the, I know the answer to this question, but did he, did he ask you do you say, hey, I want to ask for these things, and you said, no, you can't? Uh, I said, no, I'm going to leave it right here. I'm going to leave it where it is. I'm done. No, but I mean, like, during the transaction. What do you mean? Like, did you tell him you can't ask for these things? Uh, I advised as far as... So you said it right there, yeah. It, you advised him. Yep. If you have a realtor that says, no, you can't ask for that, so we're not putting it on there, you need to find a new realtor. Because your job he, is to, yeah, but he might have took it that way. And his whole thing was like, well, I didn't know a lot about the process. And it was like, well, I don't need to tell you about, I don't need to walk through with you every single piece of real estate knowledge and then have you tell me what to write. If you want to do that, go become a realtor yourself and write your own contracts. When you hire a realtor, you hire someone who knows those things and understands what's going on in the day to day and then takes care of that for you. What do they call those people? Professionals, I think? Yeah. Yeah. Right. People who have, like, you know, have uh, they've gone to school for these things. It, it, at, the, at the same time, it doesn't matter uh, any realtor. Like, there's going to be so many things that you're like, oh, we should have done this, we should have done that, regardless of who the realtor is, because once you live inside the home, shit pops up. Yeah. So it's just like, this Which, guy is just, when, lives, just living in regret with every decision he makes in his entire life. And when stuff was when stuff did happen during the transaction, I took care of it. The seller's agent and the seller were dragging their feet. They were a huge pain in the butt. Um, I was going above and beyond outside of the transaction to take care of things for this guy. He told me uh, multiple times, uh, right around the time we were closing, and then right after the time we were closing, he told me on at least two separate occasions, "Hey man, if you could just take care of this for us, we're going to write you a glowing review on Zillow." After the first one, never did it. After the second one, realized he's never going to do it. And then he also brought that up when he was asking for his renewal on his home warranty. And so that's when I knew, hey, bro, hey, bro you're kind of being manipulative. And that's not how this is going to work. Two questions. Yep. Referral? Was he a referral? How do I put this? So. Fruit roll of client? Uh huh. What? what? Say again. Fruit roll-up client? No. Well, 
I get, I'm going to tell you what happened off air. Not with me, but with... He was a referral through someone I had put under contract. And that gentleman's wife referred me to this gentleman. Okay. You said got under contract, so you never closed with that. We backed, we backed out of the first one mm -hmm. through a Benzer cancellation. And then they never bought Do again? Do you remember me telling you about this? I don't, I don't know. Did they ever buy again? No. I don't know. I don't remember that. All right. This is going to be the episode where we mute you guys again. That's a fun story, though. That's a good one. You sure you don't want to say that on there? Well, well, we'll get some time passed for that one, maybe. You didn't tag me on FUB with these two people, did you? No. Okay, good. No. <laughs> okay, second question. <laughs> yeah. Out of state or in state? Uh, in state. From uh, moving as well? So they're moving in, they were already in state or they're moving from here from out of state? There's some details with this that... Okay, fair, yeah. <sighs> Just leave it. Yeah, I, I'm going to leave it, and I'll tell you more off air because I, there's some very interesting things that happened with this one that I kind of am guesstimating at, but um, I'll tell you afterward. Okay. Yeah. All right, we ready to do this? Sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sledgehammers in the Office podcast where we celebrate the heavy hitters on the job site and in the office. Today I'm joined by Joseph Morris. What are we drinking? We are drinking a small, low-cal, ultra-zero uh, monster energy drink because uh, I was going to fall asleep when I got here. It's been a long day. Very hot. Mason Oxendale. The uh, sugar-free water enhancer. Non-alcoholic. <laughs> And as always, Shamrock Farms chocolate milk, whole milk, because that one is the best. All right, let's jump into some of our numbers real quickly. This is going to be for the greater Phoenix area. We track these so that we know what's going on uh, or have a general idea of what's going on in the real estate market, as well as some of the uh, building numbers uh, for some of the materials we track. So active homes are at 9,048. Uh, that should be similar to two weeks ago. Same with our closed numbers, 5,551. That might be a, uh, a nominal amount. Interest rate, 6.5%. That's been roughly the same. Two by fours, 325. Steady. Plywood, 1455. That one's up $2 a sheet, half inch, 10-foot uh, copper pipe. That one's up $4 from a month ago, but from two weeks ago, that's the same. So, uh, in regards to the market, we've got some stuff to talk to you guys about the median purchase price next week that we're going to dive into. It's Mason's favorite topic, so we're going to just tease that right now. But in regards to the market, we're seeing a lot of these numbers stay steady. The closed numbers are staying steady. Active numbers are staying steady, which means as homes are selling, more people are putting their homes on the market. Interest rate is still at 6.5%. We talked about it more in the entertainment part of the podcast, but a lot of people are getting seller concessions. That's helping with buying down that rate for a lot of people, uh, all that good stuff. So uh, for us on the construction side, materials costs are staying steady. Copper is up. So there's a couple areas that do suck in, um, obviously for the end consumer in terms of all of that. But overall, it's been great that we're seeing uh, prices stay pretty steady in all of that. So thoughts, comments, or... Was that pretty? Yeah, I mean, it's been same kind of trend for a while. Yeah, you know, nothing too uh, crazy. Yeah, a couple hundred homes. The markets, the active homes are going down a couple hundred, but at the same time, like you said, there's about twelve hundred to sixteen hundred homes being sold every week too. So you know, curious to see what the interest rates will do to the market. Yeah. Saw a headline that another bank had just got sold, seized and sold. Seized? Yeah. It was like seized and then like said, hey, like you're being sold. What bank? I forget, but JP Morgan, I believe, picked it up. Anyways, let's get away from things that we don't know about. Joe, hmm. uh, building process we want to talk about tonight. Uh, jam extensions for interior doors. This is something we got into 
um, a couple weeks ago. So if you want to walk through people through uh, real quickly on installing some interior doors, what is a jam extension, why we do it, and then uh, how we do it, and just try and paint that word picture for people uh, since we don't have an example in front of them. Mm. Uh, jam extension. Interesting bit. So what a jam extension does is basically flushes you out or takes you beyond a surface you wish to apply something to, or maybe your jam extension is going to be your finished product. Uh, kind of depends what you're going up against. Jam extensions on windows and frames typically means that's going to be your final product. They're going to put drywall returns right up to that, and this is going to kind of give your window another level and also cover up the frame of the window to tie it into whatever it may be around so they're not putting drywall in very weird spots. Typically, you're just going to nail them on really quick. In our instance, our jam extensions were to extend the uh, or widen the frame of a door to give us a little bit more surface to put our trim against because we had some issues where the wall was further out than the door itself and we wanted to make sure we had a nice flush even uh, finish against the trim to the wall. So it got tricky. Um, Thaddeus got busy with a table saw and had to make some miracles happen. But it was a good time all around. Um, I don't know, that, that house is weird though. Uh, you're not going to really see a lot of jam extensions on doors, I don't think, too often. Which, in a lot of times, doors are going to be constructed for either a 2 by 4 wall, which means that the jam, which is going to be usually the side pieces that go up against the stud, uh, the side pieces or the top, I should say. Um, and drywall on top of that, yeah. So Yeah, so they're going to be put, uh, put up against the stud and then the drywall. So if we have a 3.5 inch stud plus... Uh, half inch on each side of drywall, we need a four and a half inch jam. Typical. If we're framing with two by sixes, that's five and a half inch stud, half inch on each side. So we have six and a half inch jams. Um, for what we were getting into, well, I guess there's several ways that we can look at this. In older houses, there were, uh, before drywall really took over, it was plaster and lath. So you had a it would be a substance kind of like drywall that was put on the wall first. You'd have some wire mesh that goes on top of it like chicken wire. And then it's a plaster, uh, like a concrete plaster that gets put on the wall. So that is typically thicker than um, half inch. Usually it kind of came out closer to three quarter. But since it is put on uh, by hand, there's no like... We, we can't say, oh, it's four and a half or it, whatever the measurement is. That, that There's no standard, I should say. They did it until it felt right. Right, essentially. Um, so when we're putting in doors that have the common four and a half inch jam, we need to be able to add to it at times, especially in some of these older homes. We can stack on top of that. Some homes that are even older are going to have plaster and lath and true two by fours, which means they are two inch by four inch which then pushes us out even farther. So the jam extension then is gonna be that piece of trim that really helps us widen out that door jam so that it looks consistent and like Joe says, really finishes end to end. So the way that we do that also is we're gonna do a little stair step detail in the trim. So what you'll usually see when someone trims out a door is it's gonna be held back probably like 3 16 of an inch from the edge of the door jam. So it kind of looks like it has this nice rolling step to it. We're going to do the same thing with our jam extensions. So instead of having one step, you'll have two. Uh, but that way, especially if you have a rolled jam already, it's not going to be a little indent and it just flows a lot nicer. So, yeah, anything to add to that? Um, if you do it right, it looks good. If you can't do it right, uh Try your best, cock the rest, you know what I mean? <laughs> Make sure you pay a painter that you love. Oh, yeah, get someone good on board. If you know, you pick up where you're not going to be able to put down. Um, if you know you're going to be able to pull something off, maybe don't give the next guy so much money if he doesn't have a lot of work to do. If you're going to have a hard time with something, make sure the guy coming in after you is uh, aware of that and he's going to get taken care of. Because <laughs> we, we appreciate the business from the gentleman who gives it to us. He's given us a good amount of business, especially in the last year and a half, two years. A little solid guy. Um, but <laughs> he does like to give us some tricky stuff and surprises. Yeah. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just he knows who to call when it doesn't, uh, when somebody's going to come in and complain instead of get things done. Yeah. Sun's game starts in two minutes. All right. So do you have the rest of the content that you can deliver in two minutes? Blah, blah.
<laughs> I said content, not noise. <laughs> What's the universal sound for the podcast is over? <laughs> At this point, it is. I really hope that we get to a point, uh, a point where people would listen to podcasts and they do it along with us right at the end. Because do you ever, like, are there podcasts you listen to if it's the intro or whatever and then you'll kind of be, like, saying it, like, their intro along with them? Mm-hmm. It's a little catchy. Yeah. Yeah. Just, like, at the end of the podcast, though. Blah, blah. Are you suggesting we get a jingle? No, we have, like, an intro and outro and then we have our blah, blah. So yeah, we're we all need, set. We need some music of some nature. It would be fun to reach out to an artist and be like, hey, can we... Buddy's, Buddy used to be a rapper. I can ask him. We did look that up before. Mm-hmm. That was in one of the earlier podcasts. Yeah. I got an acoustics guy. Pro BMX writer, too. Yeah? Yeah. It's been a while since I talked to him, but I imagine I can reach out. That'd be dope. Yeah. Can you make it sexual yet professional? Oh, we need Grant McDonald for that. <laughs> Is that Ram Ranch? Hell yeah, it's Ram Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Open every podcast. 87. <laughs> What does that spaceship say? What does that cock ship say? <laughs> Could you imagine we have guests in here? All right, guys, we're going to play some music to intro, then we'll jump into it. We'll introduce you guys and go from there. I imagine someone at some point would just get up and leave. <laughs> they should. Yeah. Mark, you know what? No, we got to preface them. It's going to be good. You're going to like it. All right, so this could have possibly gone in the entertainment side, but we're going to try and keep it more serious. Um, we want to talk about upgrades and finishes to houses that bring the biggest return on investment. And on the flip side of that coin too, we want to talk about the negative side to that as well. Um, we we kind of were looking at a reel earlier before we jumped on the podcast and it was these guys who were flipping a house and they're showing the before and after photos and it was like, okay, like what'd you do to the house? And they're talking about how we sold at list price the first week. And it's like, good for you guys, but the house looks like shit. So um, on the one side, we're going to start with finishes that bring the biggest return on investment. So what is something that people can do that is going to be budget conscious, but also be something that uh, people who are buying uh, are going to see a value in. And then we'll jump into after we get done with that, uh, people who take advantage of that and what the negatives are. So, um, Joe, I'll turn it over to you real mm-hmm. quick. Let you start throwing some stuff out there, Mason. Uh, have you jump in as well as far as what are things in regards to upgrades and finishes that someone could do in a house that are pretty budget conscious that have um, a big statement piece in, in regards to return on investment? If you have the ceiling space, uh, chandelier is always a good idea. Now, I know that's not in everyone's ballpark and it doesn't make the most sense in a lot of houses, but if you can do it, please, please do one. I think they're cool. I think that's one of the most underrated things you can do in a home. But if you're trying to stay like really budget conscious and you're trying to like... Well, even let's say someone's going to spend a couple thousand dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. But they're not going to do a full gut and remodel. We're talking, um, man, just spend time trick picking out the correct trim that's a big one if you're using cheap mm-hmm. trim or something that's not wide enough that's going to be one of the biggest things for me personally you walk into a place and they've got the most minimalist trim you can get your hands on uh, that's kind of strange to me especially if you're doing something with the house from scratch and you're trying to change everything uh anything made out of metal anything you're going to touch anything you're going to look at a lot um, you got to think about what it's like to be in a home so door handles uh hardware around the house um, for cabinets drawers stuff of that nature anything that you're going to be putting near something that might also be new. So if you're putting in stainless steel appliances or something like that, and you're doing a countertop, make sure your hardware looks good with it. Um, that's going to be the cheapest thing you can do. There's a lot of really good options out there for both of those things. And there's a lot of ways you can get it cheap, expensive, however you really want to go. But those are the two biggest things I see people not paying as much attention skip to. Skip over. Yeah. Yeah, they skip over. Yeah. Baseboards are a big thing. It's not even like, you know, you go to Lowe's and Home Depot, there's like four or five different like designs of, it's like, you just get a different size, you yeah. know, the the three quarters inch versus an inch or even an inch and a half. Like the bigger you go, the more pop it has. Hmm. It's not necessarily, I mean, if you're not like, you know, you guys work on houses, I show houses a lot. So if you're not doing that a lot, you don't really notice it. You're just like, oh, this house like feels really nice, but like, they all they might have done is just put larger baseboards in. 
Yeah. But you don't realize that because you, you don't see houses all the time. Yeah, majority of people, it's going to go right over their heads, but it's the same reason that people reach for car doors the same way. It's because it's something that they're used to and it's something that they do all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of that natural thing you're going to do. Yeah, and ho on the hardware thing, I mean, because, I mean, I got hardware for my cabinets. I have a lot of cabinets in my house. So it got a little expensive. It might not be the most budget friendly, but it's going to make, like, whether you're flipping a house, buying a flip house, or trying to upgrade your home, like hardware, is a must for your cabinets. Yeah. But also the little thing, especially in that video that we watched. Like if you're gonna change the color scheme of the home, you know, you got, you're going from, you know, natural wood panels with darker scheme to like, you know, like the more gray and white and stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of those cabinets have those darker hinges, you know, the hinges that the cabinet doors are on. And a lot of the older cabinets, you can see the back side of the hinges. You guys can't see the cabinets behind me, but like those ones are hidden. Yeah. But if you can see, like, you know, if you have brown hinges all over the place, but it doesn't fit your, like they stick out like a sore thumb. Like just little, little things so like that. In some ways, it's like even just attention to detail can cause a lot of that price point to jump as well. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a flip. I mean, to me, when somebody says I'm going to flip a house, it's lipstick. Mm -hmm. Like we saw in the video. Paint mm -hmm. cabinets, maybe new countertops, but you can get those fairly cheap now mm -hmm. compared to what you used to be able to, and new flooring. And they don't even put in new baseboards. And then paint. They reuse them. Yeah, paint too. That's the other thing too, where especially if it's your house, pay a professional to get it painted, A, especially if you're buying a used home. Because there's so many little nicks and stuff on the walls. Well, they'll go and fill the holes, smooth it out, and make it look way nicer than if you just Especially painted over it. Especially textured yeah. walls. If you're coming at a lower price point, you've got textured walls. That's something you got to pay a lot of attention to because even in my apartment, I can walk around. It's not anyone's fault in particular. It's just you can tell where somebody came in and they didn't get paid the amount of money that they should have to repair things because you can see you know, four-inch holes in the wall that have yeah. just been like... That's what I tell my clients. Like, you're not necessarily paying the painters to paint. You're painting them to do all the work before that. Because that's what, you, yeah, the prep does everything. Prep, prep, prep. If you've got location, location, location in realty, paint is prep, prep, prep. Exactly. Well, I mean, that's why, I mean, to me, I didn't like the video. I didn't like the, they painted the cabinets. I didn't like the way it looked because it didn't, it looked fake probably because they didn't, they might have put like a little coat over it, then painted it when really like wood you're supposed to sand it right sand right. prime paint and then that why it bleeds into the wood and it looks more like white wood versus a painted wood and personally for me like i think the cabinet part yes cabinet packages do still come at a cost there are some more basic pack packages that you can get mm -hmm. that aren't going to be breaking your bank and still look good um but for me if someone's saying hey i want to paint my cabinets in my mind, I'm going, you either need to pay someone a pretty high dollar amount to be able to paint that to make it look good. Otherwise, it's going to look like crap. There's houses that I've been in mm -hmm. that they've painted the cabinets and you can see little cracks in it. And it's like, oh, I can see that that's, that's a painted cabinet. Like you, you just know right away. You it's just like see that, yeah, you just see layers of paint over it. Yep. And it's not the original cabinet color. So all of a sudden, that's where, like we said, it's. The big thing is going to be attention to detail. There's there's nothing, I guess in some ways, like the flip side of the coin that we're talking about is if someone goes through and does a lot of the lipstick things where it's like, hey, finishes wise, let's put some new handles in here. Let's get some new hardware, maybe switch out faucets for the sinks, stuff like that, just because we can update the color scheme. Cool. But if it looks off, if it looks like it wasn't installed correctly or things like that, it's... That's what's going to tie everything together in the end, where it's like, hey, can you dupe someone who might not know what they're doing? Sure. Because they might walk into the house, oh, look, it looks nice. But if you have a professional's eye, you walk in there and go, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. So I'd say the other thing, too, that... And the, prof well, the professional eye thing, you know, you guys can tell that, but, like, if I take my... I can take clients who, you know, they're not... They don't do this all the time. I walk them inside what I'd call a flip home. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this looks really nice. It's cool. But then I take them into a re what I call a remodeled home, which is done properly. Like, they instantly can tell. Just like they walk into, oh, this like this feels cool. 
because yep. it's just I don't know how to explain. It's just like you know the, whether it's the way they put the flooring down. It's just a different feel. There are certain things where sometimes people can't put their finger on. I don't know exactly what it is. But it looks nice. But they can tell there's a difference between the quality of the product that is being put in front of them. Yeah. And I, I, my first, I probably, I guess it's the first house we bought as a married couple was a new build. We got painted cabinets, but like over, especially the drawer where the trash can was, the paint wears off. Mm -hmm. um, so this time when we got did our new build, we didn't go higher end cabinets, but we went you know more middle of the pack kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I recently, until I put on my door handles, the whole time I was putting on door handles, I thought that our cabinets had that. What's it called where they put like the like, like the, veneer? The, yeah, the veneer thing over it, mm -hmm. and because it's like a grayish cat, it's grayish yeah. or whatever, you know. And sometimes, you know, if they do it piece by piece, it looks really nice, mm -hmm. especially when the, you have the shaker cabinets where it's like yeah. the five pieces. Well, then I'm looking into it because, of course, one of them I fucked up. I drilled the hole. I was using this that one of those my buddy had one of those devices that we were yeah. looking at, and for some reason it something slipped. I didn't notice it, and now the three cabinets, one of the cabinets is. What's over here? So I had to throw the whole thing away. Yeah. So I had to. Yeah. So I've got to order a new face for the cabinet. But I was looking everything up. So I was like, oh, maybe I can just fill it with wood putty and then put the thing over it. But these cabinets were actually painted, and I couldn't even tell. I had to like look really close, and like I was like, oh, it, these are it, what painted. Is it like an enam enamel paint though? It's like a pretty thick paint. Yeah. So yeah, that's the kind of coat. Like, mm -hmm. It's more of like a coating that goes on there. Exactly. It's not. But it's what? Yeah. It's, it's not a spray on. Like yes. it's not us taking a spray a brush. paint to the back of these yeah. cabinets right here. Because it's because those are like almost like self leveling. Like you paint it. There's no there's no paint strokes because it just like levels out. Yeah. If, I don't know if that's a pro proper terminology, but that's how I visualize it. But a huge difference. And the problem is that these flippers get away with it. I'm fast. It's All good right. for like 30. I think we're back. So, but the question is, how long do we lose everybody? The actual one part of the podcast where we're talking real estate related. <laughs> I think it was just that short bit. But it, uh, what, what I was saying is that these flippers, they get away with the lipstick stuff is because appraisers come in and like they're all appraisers aren't created equally. And appraisers look on, pictures. they can do it off of pictures. They don't know how stuff is properly installed, but like, you know, oh, painted canvas, so that's an upgrade. New flooring. They don't look at, but you don't. They so they'll be able to get the appraised value, but the overall quality of the home is not there. Yeah, which and I think the big thing is for on both both ends of this, as far as for us on the construction side, it's then we have to make the sale to people to say, hey, here's what you're buying in each situation. You can go with something that is cheaper, that is not going to be a great finish for a long term. If you want to take a picture, throw it up on Instagram, throw it up on Facebook, or if you want to throw it on the MLS and it looks good, you can do that. If you want something that's going to be a quality product, that's going to last for a long time, that is something that we more, that's the camp we play in, let's do that. That's what we're selling to them. For you, it's then the education. It's like when you walk into a house as far as, hey, I've had someone like Saito work on this house. So it's like, oh, you can tell that they put quality into it because of X, Y, and Z. They didn't, they didn't just remove two door panels and stick a new door in that frame because they're idiots trying to save time. It's, mm -hmm. no, 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 like we're going to tear the whole thing out. We're going to reframe it, make it all right before we put it back. It's the communication on, hey, there's certain details that you look for to say, Oh, they, they did that correct. Mm -hmm. Or well, big pet peeve where, like, you can tell is when, like, all they did was replace the door, but not the door frame. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't fit. Like, you can just tell. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, when if I have clients, they walk inside the house, they're like, dude, I love this. Like, let's do it. I'm not going to talk them out of it. I've got fairly good relationships with a couple of the inspectors that I recommend. So I've had it done before where it's like, hey, dude, I know this is like a flip home, like, Will you evaluate it and do your due diligence, you know, knowing that it's a flip home and kind of look for little small things that they might have skipped out on to help out with the clients? And they, they always do. Yeah. You know, they're a little more, they'll actually walk on the flooring to make sure, especially with the uh, laminate stuff, the, you vinyl. Know, the vinyl laminate yeah. stuff, make sure, you know, they'll do little extra things like that. 
So you've got them helping the customer out long term. So look for those concessions. Exactly. Yeah, because I'm not going to tell. I don't. I'm not going to tell you to buy a house. I'm not going to talk down a house. If they or if they raise questions about something, I'll give them my opinion. Oh, why is the door like that? Well, it's because if you look right here and here, they didn't replace the door frame. They just replaced the door because it's the cheapest route, and they don't want to go through the whole process of it. So. Yeah. And then that's a red flag because if they weren't willing to do that, what other areas were they willing to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Skip out. Where are the dead bodies? Did I tell you that on the podcast? In the desert. Yeah, in the desert. <laughs> I was watching the, I was, you know, that's how I do my construction stuff is YouTube. That's why I like how you guys are putting more constructional stuff up on the YouTube channel. Hmm. Uh, but I was taking out a medicine cabinet because I put in a mirror that I already had one in. Uh-huh. And uh, I was one of the videos watching out and he was doing a tutorial He's like, if you want to play really a joke, he took bought a fake skeleton and put it inside the oh, wall after yeah. he. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. this was after I already patched it up. I almost thought about just yeah. punching a hole in it, redoing it. Could you imagine just like a little four foot tall skeleton too? Just like really get him, you know? Like, well, some, I mean, yeah, I a mean, kid. <laughs> just even the first throw glance. Like toys in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, little Timmy was looking. Yeah. He was like put upside it, down, reaching for a toy that put, was stuck in the put, 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 put a little note on his chest that says, "I was bad." Yeah. <laughs> I messed up. Uh, oh, hey. Do you have medicine cabinets in your master bathroom? Yeah, one. What kind of medicine you got in there? <laughs> um, no. We'll talk off air how much. What? Huh? Um, something we saw recently that I thought was really cool and we want to do in, I want to do in a house is it's a barn door you know, I'll medicine pay, cabinet. If it's something that my wife likes... We'll pay for the product if you want to use it for video shoot for the cost of labor. We might. He wants free work done. We might. Well, <laughs> for this, we might do it just because I thought it was cool. Let me think about it. Let me see how much it is. Well, big, well, the this, the, the big question is, is that, yeah, you, let me double check with the boss. Yeah. We'll, she might we'll, be like, that's fucking stupid. Well, no, we'll send you pictures, and if she likes it, then we'll have a conversation. But essentially what it is, you have... The strip of metal that goes across and you've got like your framed mirror that sits on the hardware on a track. So when you want to get to your medicine cabinet, you just pull it to the side. There's the medicine cabinet. Oh, that's when you're done, cool. You put it back. Yeah. So it's a really kind of novel idea in regards to it's the barn door medicine cabinet. Yeah. And it looks like we saw it uh, just this past weekend at a customer's house. It looks phenomenal. And it might actually look cool because I think we don't have a door that closes off to the bathroom. So like... In the mornings, if somebody has to, you know, if my wife gets ready early, if I actually mm-hmm. sleep in, like, the lights, so you can just see the lights. So we might have to put a barn door there, so it actually might work out good. Plus, we weren't able to pick a lot of those kind of upgrades in our mm-hmm. home, so we're definitely open, like, to, you know, change things up, even though we just bought the house. Which I think there's, that was something we had talked about, that we think there's a, there's a market for that in regards to there's people who they didn't get all the upgrades that they wanted to um, because a lot of times the builder's upgrades are kind of standard. So in uh, our idea was to start advertising to some of these new build communities saying, hey, we'll come customize your house in regards to it's like, let, let's say you didn't want to do, I don't want to do the custom can light package throughout my whole house or whatever it is, but it's like, did you want to upgrade a shower like in particular and not just their standard typical, well, we could put in this one with the black tile and the white tile on the floor and it or you could do the gray tile and the blue tile but that's it that's all we offer it's like i'll go get whatever freaking tile you want so oh, yeah especially uh what is it i forget the build there's a couple builders that do only packages meritage homes i think meritage homes not lennar maybe the lower grade ones lennar i believe was they essentially do like pre-built. Yeah, but they have They're pre-packaged. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, those are the the lower end homes too. Once you get to the higher ones, like some of the ones yeah. that we were looking at with the guest houses, those ones were like full. You pick full yeah. studio, which and just like or like every- people with the spec homes. Like I got a client. There was a spec home because you know builders are still building, but you oh, know, yeah. so there's they're putting spec homes which used to not be able to back on the MLS and stuff. And so I've been telling clients, when you find that, I've gotten a spec home for 30 grand less than advertised because it's already built. It's sitting there. They want to get rid of it. 
And a lot of more people, because they don't want to wait, they're buying more spec homes. So, you know, hey, if you're in a spec home, you want to make some changes. And Easy changes, because you might be able to reuse a lot of stuff. Depending on the spec home, too. There is... Let's see. Do you remember there was a house off of 36th Street and Glendale? I'm trying to think what would be a good... Uh... We did the YouTube video there where you threw the um, product testing. I did a lot of that. No, but the it was the glass cleaner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They built it for like 2.4. And sold it for four point seven. Oh my god, Damn. that was that was awesome. That was a really phenomenal house, though. Yeah. Okay, you can get away what, with those homes they, as long as they're not they in did, subdivisions. Though, uh, it was it's Paradise Valley, so that's one so, of the yeah. Hard it had ones. bigger, yeah. It's a little harder to do that with homes that are in the you know side by side. Right. It had yeah. to have been a one point three lot. The, that's what didn't make sense. Acre to me. Rage, right? Like those numbers that they tell me, like when you look at the house that was on the land, the land that it was, like. There had to be something there that, like, they, they got a deal somewhere because it didn't make sense. Yeah. But. I'm going to find some land and we're going to put you guys to the test. We're going to buy, we're going to go and we're going to buy some land. And we're going to put a fucking barn dominium on there. And you guys are going to trick it the fuck out. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to do it. Was there square footage on it? Whatever we want. This is just more of a investment. Oh, okay. So yeah. we're trying to do something with it outside of just like for the meme. If someone wants to finance it, then we'd be willing to. We'll figure out a way. We won't finance it. We'll get it. No, no. Like if we have someone who wants to finance it, like if they want to put up the money for us to do it, we'll we'll go hard in the paint. Mm-hmm. I need more of these. They're going to finance the house. They need to finance me. Yeah. Some of the regular ones, though. My fiance will kill me, but... Hey, if, if it's that kind of a project, we'll sleep on site. Yeah, if we're making the money, yeah. We'll, I mean, I yeah, got the I was about to say, yeah, if it's a if it's a six month if it's a six month project to make a hundred grand each. Mm. Babe, I love you, but I gotta go to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up for the evening. Hmm. Uh, Fruit roll up style. No. But well, there's three of us. Not with work. not with you guys. Oh. We'll ask him. He's allowed after he gets married. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We were at Costco. It's, it's absence before marriage. Doesn't say anything about who and what afterwards, right? <laughs> I mean, there's a different verse. Say, there's a different it part of say it. Who. But that specific part. Just don't read that far. <laughs> Stop reading it that far. Does that count? Is it a sin if you don't know about it? <laughs> Totally forget. That's the one that got right by me. I don't know. We were at Costco last week or the week before. Sold out, dude. Uh, no, there was a 72 pack of uh, fruit roll ups. I'm like, hey, babe, do we want to grab these for the honeymoon? <laughs> Classic. Oh, I might just buy you a big old box, but obviously it won't be your only present, but like, but not wrap it. Like, buy the 72 and just put a bow on it so everybody knows exactly yes. what it is for. Do it. You should do it. Because there's going to be a lot of people who's like, oh, do they really like fruit roll-ups? <laughs> and that's when you just go, Thaddeus does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'll be here be like, you're welcome. And then it's going to say, scan me and have a QR code and take you to a uh, Pornhub video. Oh, so everybody nice. who walks by that scans it. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone knocked on the glass. And then I'll put from Joe. Yay. <laughs> It was probably Adam. No, it was probably just the table rocking or something. I hope Adam has a good night. All right, Joe, where can they find you? Uh, on Instagram. We got a new Instagram account going. I'm trying to work on it, but I'm being a little complacent. Uh, DoorDude.jpg. Um, it was going really well at first, and uh, I've been in more occupied homes lately, so getting content's a little bit more tricky when people are watching me and talking to me the entire time I'm working. Uh, yeah, see some cool stuff there. Mm -hmm. Mason wouldn't it be bad you should start promoting to see like you know if you run across any doors that have glory holes yeah we can do a glory hole door yeah yeah. Glory. we can I will install it glory in glory hole Monday yeah. hey do yeah. we want to do that for the barn door at your house a glory hole yeah true 
But what if what if what if somebody actually slips and just pushes the door, and then you're inside? Well, we'll do it on a sliding glass door so they can see through. <laughs> it's either going to work well. It's going to be a circumcision. You decide. <laughs> Mason, where can they find you? Oh, at the normal at Mason Oxendale. Although I really like your handle at the dot JPEG. A genius. Do. Yeah. All right, you can follow what we're doing at Saito underscore building for our construction projects. We're starting to post more of those, uh, get those up there. So, yeah, follow. Uh, if you guys want to, uh, if you've got questions about buying or selling a home, reach out to Mason. Even if it's, if you're out of state and you have some questions, he might be able to give you some uh, advice in that. And then obviously if you're in the greater Phoenix area, he's going to be the guy to really help you out with all of that. So uh, shoot him a DM. If you've got stuff on the construction side, send that our way. And then if you've got a house that you want to buy and then work on done on afterward, let him know that you want the full sledgehammers in the office uh, buy and renovate experience. So Yep, and we do offer uh, fruit roll-ups as gifts. This is true. No treatment. No, no. It boxed wrapped. Instructions, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Left to right, over under. All right. Until next time, I hope your hammer stays accurate, your Wi Fi fast, and your work blessed. See everybody. Blah, blah.